So now we have two ways that we can always find delta u. And this is the kind of thing you're likely to have to do on the exam. Generally on the exam, you're going to have to find, say, a q, or find a w, or find a delta u, or go back and forth between them. Well, now we can always find work or q, and then we can use those to find delta u. Now we have two ways that always work to find delta u. One way to find delta u is first to figure out the heat and the work. And the other way is just to focus on the change in temperature. And again, it makes sense that all we really need to know is the change in temperature. Delta U only depends on the change in temperature, so it makes sense that there's a formula that would relate the change in temperature to delta U. And it's just a weird, uh, a weird curiosity that it happens to have C sub V in it. So we could also have made a note to ourselves that this equation also gives us delta u for this special case, because in this case, the work is zero. Mm -hmm. So in this special case, q and delta u, both given by the same formula. All right, let's go on to a constant temperature. So by the way, uh, one thing I should have mentioned is you should be trying, I'm trying to make like a, uh, something that you can keep in your notes, kind of a table. So we're going to have one column for things that are only true for constant pressure, one column for things that are only true for constant volume. We'll have another column now for processes of constant temperature, and up here we have the formulas that always work. Mm -hmm. So constant temperature, what's the special name for that? That's a name that you definitely would be tested on. This is isobaric because we use a barometer to measure pressure. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the device you use to measure temperature? Oh, isothermic. That's right, because you would use a thermometer to yeah. measure temperature. So this is a, I think the standard term is isothermal. This is an isothermal process, and we can remember that because therm is like ter uh, for temperature. Now, this is not going to be a straight line. Is an isotherm going to be upward sloping or downward sloping? Um, Do pressure and volume move in the same direction or opposite directions? Opposite directions. Yeah. If you compress the gas, its pressure goes up. Mm -hmm. In fact, these are hy hyperbolas. So this is what an isotherm would look like. Mm -hmm. Now, what can we say about the delta U for this process? Um. For an isothermal process of constant temperature. I'm not sure. This will take us back a little bit to something you might have seen in that other series of videos. Remember, a second ago we were talking about what really determines the internal energy. What's the internal energy of the gas really measuring? Um, the other key concept for the internal energy is temperature. Okay. Remember how we were saying that the internal energy is really just a measure of the temperature yeah. of the gas. Mm -hmm. Well, what's happening to the temperature in this case? No change in temperature. We have a constant temperature. That tells us that there's no change in the internal energy. Okay. So what's delta U going to be? It equals T. It's a little bit more trickier than that. Well, first of all, what's delta T going to equal? For a constant temperature oh, process. Zero. That's right. Another name for constant is no change. Mm -hmm. If the temperature is constant, that means there's no change in the temperature. All right, so the temperature is not changing, oh, which okay. means that the energy is not changing. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't, we don't want to confuse U and delta U. There still is energy, but there's no change in the energy. And it's delta U that goes into the formula here, into our first law of thermodynamics. 
this is one of the most commonly tested processes, so it's very important when we see a isothermal process to remember that means that delta U is zero. Now, what can we say about the work here? Well, it's still the area under the curve, but now it's not so easy to find the area. It was very easy to find the area here because we had a straight line and a rectangle. And it was very easy to find the area here because it was zero. It's not easy to find the area under a curve. In fact, it would take some calculus to figure out the area under a curve. Yeah. Uh, but your course doesn't go into in for much calculus, so we'll just memorize the formula that comes out of the calculus. Let's see if I can remember that. This is the formula for the work done by the gas. So the work done on the gas would be the negative of that if you wanted to work with that idea. Your textbook usually works with the work done by the gas. So this is nRT times the natural log of V final over V initial. This is V sub F and V sub I. V final over V initial. And is that V volume or? Yeah, V for volume. Cap, so these are supposed to be capital V's. Well, like I said, we're not going to go through the calculus to prove this. There's a proof in your textbook, but I don't think you'd be tested on that. So we'll just have this formula in our cheat sheet. We can kind of see, I'm sorry? Yeah, OK. We can kind of see that this would make sense, though, because let's say that the volume is increasing. Does that mean that work is being done on or by the gas? By the gas. So that would mean that this should come out positive. Well, that's, what, that's why this is in the numerator. We should have the, um, if volume was increasing, we would have the, uh, V final in the numerator, which would give us a, uh, a ratio that's bigger than one, so the logarithm would be positive. And that kind of comes out next. So we'll just minimize this formula. And now we can use this to figure out the work. Now there's a drawback to this formula, which is that the way this is usually tested again is in terms of PV curves. But notice that if the problem gives you a PV curve, it's giving you pressure and volume. That's not exactly the information we need to plug in here. This has got lowercase n and t. Remember what does lowercase n stand for again? For the yeah, r is our universal gas constant, and t is? Right, so it would be more useful if we could put this in terms of pressure and volume. Well, there's actually a very easy way to substitute this out and put in something that deals with the pressure and the volume. Can you think of, how, what, what can we replace this with that deals with pressure and volume? P divided by v. Where did you get that from? What equation are you using? Oh, it would just be P times V, because okay. V equals NRT. That's right, you're just thinking about the ideal gas law. Yeah. Remember again, even though I haven't been reminding you, this is almost always tested in terms of ideal gases. We're pretty much assuming that we can use the ideal gas law. Yeah. Well, if we're dealing with an ideal gas, we know that PV equals NRT. Well, that gives us something that we can plug in over here. Mm -hmm. And this is oftentimes more useful for doing the types of problems you'll see on the exam, because again, if you're given a PV curve, that gives you pressure and volume. It doesn't give you the number of moles and the temperature. Mm -hmm. In your textbook, they only give you this formula, and they expect you to realize that you can also use this formula. But maybe in your cheat sheet, it's simple as just to write both of them. But it should be obvious how we can go. So we're not going to learn how to prove this, but it's obvious how to prove this, given this, using this formula here. Now, remember here, the pressure and the volume are changing. So what should we plug in for the, that's why we have V final here and V initial. So what should we plug in here, the initial of the final values? Well, it doesn't matter because the whole point here is since the temperature is constant, P times V is a constant. Since the temperature is constant, P times V is a constant. So they, these would both give you the same thing. So you could plug in P initial, V initial, or P final, V final. You have to be consistent. So. You could do it like this, P initial times V initial, or you could do P final times V final. Over here, you have to use V final and V initial, but this could either be P initial, V initial, or it could be P final, V final. Which one would you use? Well, whichever one gave you the, inf which the information that you were given in the problem would be more convenient. That's how we can figure out, again, now the work, this area under the curve. 
And if we know this work, we should be able to figure out the heat that was exchanged, even though we don't have a special formula for heat like we did over here. How, if I know the work, how would I figure out how much heat was exchanged? Um, well, delta U is equal to zero, so right. uh, the work will equal the heat. Yeah, the heat would equal the work done by the gas. Mm -hmm. When delta U is equal to zero, this equation becomes this equation right here. Mm -hmm. 